All right, so here's my battery box. Here's my control box. I did a video on my battery box last year, so you may want to go check it out on how I put this all together. I'm not going to get into that part of it, but I am going to get back into the control box here. Now, what I did to the control box is I actually added a tether cord, five wire, and that is going to be for the throttle box. And I'll get into what's in here in a minute. But here is the new throttle box, very simple. All that's in here is a potentiometer that has a detent. This is the main thing why I wanted to make this for the detent. And also that it's waterproof. Same wa uh, five wire dongle. And here's the extension cord for it. Okay, you can make it any length you want. Very simple to make, just connect the wires. And here's the my old throttle box. 3D print it. Uses a servo board. Let me just pop it off here in a minute to show you. There's the servo board. This wiring here used to be wired to it right here, so I'm not going to use it anymore. But uh, this is what we're going to modify. And we're going to change out this potentiometer for one with a detent. Now the difference on this setup here is that the servo board is going to go in here. Let me pop this open to show you. Here is my servo board right in here. Here's the dongle wire, which attaches to a servo wire. The easiest way to make connections that you can unplug and plug back again. Here's the extra two wires from your five wire if you want it to run the switch where you can uh, control it from the throttle box. I chose not to, but they're there if I want to do it in the future. This will come into play when I show how this one is made. The extra two wires are in here. Okay, and you'll notice that I have Velcro here because I can still use my radio control. Okay, just a matter of unplugging it here from the servo box and just plug it in right into this servo extension lead. Okay, so <clears throat> before I go into how I mod it the servo board and make and making of this uh, throttle box I'm going to show it in action ahead of time and then we'll get into that part of it here in a minute so let me just go ahead and hook everything up and we'll start to display so here all you got to do is just line up the pins That ties it in there. That ties it in there. Okay, so I already have my uh, water snake uh, trolling motor here, just so you can see it operate. Um, here's my quick disconnect, so we'll connect it now and get this thing operational. So you can see the servo board is lit up and the ESC is running. I already have my trolling motor um, set to the highest speed and so now we're just going to go ahead and move this to go forward. That's what I like that I can get that little detent there and feel feel where I need to stop. Whereas with the other one I could. Here's reverse. 
Full speed, fragile. And you can see the pulsing light. You should be able to see it there. And that's it, it works really nice. And like I said, I do have the option of going wireless, but this is about the throttle box, so we're going to stay on topic with that. All right, so let's quickly move over to how all this was done, and I'm sure it will help some of you guys out there that are attempting this and don't know how to go about it. So let's do that now. Okay, so the first thing we want to do to the servo tester is remove the knob and then we're going to be removing the cover. Save the cover for later. Here's the potentiometer that we're going to be removing off of the board. Cut the two tabs on each side of the potentiometer and remove it. This is the way I chose to do it. Removing the guts of the potentiometer is optional. I just wanted to see what it looked like inside. Now we're going to cut the three tabs off the potentiometer, but you want to leave those legs on there for future soldering. Here's where the legs of the potentiometer that we just removed. And now we're going to go ahead and unsolder it off the board to completely remove it. Use your soldering iron on each leg on the underside of the board to remove these tabs. Now we're going to make a jumper wire. You can use 20 or 22 gauge wire, it will work just fine. Place that jumper wire into those two holes where the tabs will remove the potentiometer. Now we're going to solder it in place on the underside of the board. And this is what it should look like once you're done. Now, here goes a reference guide, color code guide, for when you mount your servo wiring. Here the servo wires are tinned and ready to mount. Servo wires are now soldered onto the board, and there's your reference guide for the color chart. Now we're going to go ahead and glue the servo wire down to the board to help strengthen those solder joints. This is what it should look like when you're all done. Now here's a 3D printed case that I'm going to use to hold the servo controller, but you don't need to use it. You can go ahead and use the original case that the, that the servo tester came in. And here's mine mounted on the, P, on the 3D printed case. All done and ready to go. Okay, so here's a little pigtail connection that I'll be using for my setup. Of course, this is optional. You will need to drill a 7 16 inch hole at the desired location on the side of the box. This is the MPT tap that I'll be using to thread the hole. These MPT taps are tapered in shape, so you only want to go in as far as you need to. Once I get a few threads showing inside the box, I stop tapping for threads. You can always check the threads themselves using the cable gland to make sure that it's a tight fit and that it'll start. Here I got a tight fit and it looks good. I won't be using the glam nut. Well, so far it's looking good, so let's move on. 
At this time, drill a quarter inch hole on your cover plate for the potentiometer. Here's a simple color chart to help you get your wiring polarity correct the first time around. Move your shrink tube into position and heat shrink in place. I wrap the wiring here with glue from my glue gun for added rigidity. The two remaining wires out of your 5 wire bundle can be used for a kill switch, which is an option. This is my 3D printed knob and it will be available for download. This is the hole for the set screw. I chose to use a 10 32nd thread. You have the option to force thread the set screw into position or you can tap the hole. Set your knob into position onto the potentiometer and then tighten down the set screw. Use of an O-ring on the knob is optional, but I prefer it. Place O-ring onto the knob groove once the knob is set in place. Now mount the throttle box using your desired kayak mount. Add a couple of stickers and now it's ready for action. So now that you got the throttle box made, now you gotta mount it. So what I chose to use is Scotty. I have so many Scotty accessories, it only makes sense. So what I did was I designed a 3D printed base to mount it into this type of a Scotty mount. And what you'll use is 3M, got it backwards, 3M BHB tape. And all you do is put a couple of slices across here and then mount it in the center. Okay, so this is my this is my spare one. Here's one that's completed. You can kind of see the tape on there, all right? But it's very secure. Here's this one that has already the decals on it. So then all you got to do is mount it, clip it, and you're done. Here's my extension cord. So all you got to do is attach it. like so out of the way simple easy to control now if you're wondering why I added a pigtail and other than the convenience of easy to put it away by separating everything I'll show you why I also have a second throttle that I sometimes use, which is this one. You've probably seen it on eBay, and I believe on Amazon as well. This also has a potentiometer inside that you would wire it the same way, same way as this one. So I also added a pigtail to this one, okay? And I made a base for it for the Scotty mount. Same thing, clip it in, you connect your cord. Let's go ahead and connect connect it just for the heck of it. There you go. Route it underneath and you're all set. Alright. But this is by far the easiest to mess with, so hopefully this has helped somebody out in trying to design their setup on how they want to control their trolling motor. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.